name is Alice. I worked for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident, and everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the sequel in the Resident Evil film franchise called Resident Evil Apocalypse. So this is notably the second uh, film in the franchise. I recently saw it streaming on Amazon Prime, so I thought I would give it a watch to see how it generally compares, not really, or how it holds up, will come kind of compared to the first film, but more just how it holds up as a video game to film translation. So, as a vague memory of uh, what I remember from the first film, I thought it was decent, it was pretty good. If I was watching it just as a video or as a film with the Resident Evil name, I enjoyed it a little bit more as far as a video game to film translation. I also thought it was pretty good just because they brought in enough elements to make it a good visual representation. There was not really much new presented from it, I guess. Um, but jumping into this particular um, sequel, I actually thought um, while watching it that it was a good movie. Um, because Partly because they start off the movie with a recap of the prior film of what happened where Alice is as we start the movie. Uh, we introduce some new characters, which I guess the second female lead, her um, overall character model in the film was matched from a character model from the third game in the franchise. Um, and then from there, essentially, um, the film kind of felt like a live action video game playthrough and I actually wanted would give them a lot of points and credit for doing that so uh, once you get through the recap and you're watching the film you get some cool text animations to show where the events are taking place so kind of like a load screen that says okay you're in this city and then later you get more text animations to show where you're at somewhere else and so on and so forth it's not so overwhelming that they have to do it for every single location change but you get enough of it to the idea where when you have cutscenes in the film they're kind of like guideposts for where you are and that's what these text overlays do and they presented it in um kind of computer visualizations and sound effects so I thought that was a nice touch. Um, in general initially when you're watching the film from here the music kind of cues up when there's action so I originally when I was watching the film or initially I was going to say that the f music was kind of tropey in that the music um, picks up for, picks up in beat when you have action sequences and tones down when the action goes away. But overall, the uh, the music actually felt very video gamey, and it felt because I felt like it had a kind of air of video game quality to it. So it could have been done better, but I felt like it was adjusted to make it feel like you were in a video game. So I actually appreciated that a lot. And when the second female character is in the film with her, the guy, she's, I want to say it was probably a church or some old abandoned building and they're, the dog zombie looking thing is after them and Mila Jovovich, uh, her character comes in, um, they have a pose that looks like a cover art pose for the character. So I thought basically going into it that they were going to pull a very literal video game to film translation to pull as much of a video game look and feel as they could and that is generally what we got here. Um, especially later when we get into some more of the zombie fight scenes, there's a weird 16-bit audio effect that's applied to the um, fight scene. So rather than the usual, you know, punching a slab of meat, there's a kind of a more 16-bit retro application to it. So kind of like that old speaker effect when you're using an old, you know, 486 processor or something like that. So 
um, it's not something that you pick up initially, but I, it feels like they work their way into uh, transitioning into that more and more. And overall, I thought that was a very good touch, just because it felt like you were in, if you were kind of if you were just listening to it, you would be hard pressed. To, or I mean, you could probably tell the difference between a film film and a video game, but. If you're not really paying attention, you can. It, you probably wouldn't know the difference, or at least for me, I couldn't really notice the dip, difference between the two. Um, otherwise, coming um, off of my recent reviews and watch through of the Predator films, this film introduces a zombie predator. Just because when you're looking at the point of view of the zombie, the main zombie bad guy that um, is supposed to be the big bad villain to fight against it reminded me a lot of the predator so i thought it could have been done cheesy but overall it felt like a merging of the predator and the um aliens from the doom franchise so and it, kind of borrowing elements from both so probably not really a unique um zombie and i'm sure there's something related to them in to it in the game but i thought it was a particularly interesting touch that they did and it was very well designed um otherwise um, the movie kind of flows pretty normally as you would expect the bad the good guys have to rescue the scientist's daughter they have to get to the um, helicopter landing site they're double crossed and now Mila Jovovich's character um, ends up getting stabbed through the stomach and has to be taken for um revitalization so when she's in the lab we two main things of note happen we get her in a back to tank looking regeneration tube that looked uber dirty so i don't know why it was so green and dirty looking um but maybe it's one of those things that's a flip side to the back to tank so rather than just staying blue you can tell that it's used up because it changes from blue to a dirty green looking thing um and then one of the scientists says that her powers are expecting expanding at a geometric rate which it might be more accurate than saying it was expand. They're expanding at an exponential rate, but for some reason, it sounds a lot slower or less impressive than if her, they just said her powers are expanding at an exponential rate. So that was kind of a weird throwaway line. So I would. So it makes you. I guess it makes you want to think about her powers and how they're expanding. But it wasn't really something that was a line that it was a line that didn't really need to be or a phrase that didn't really need to be changed so a kind of strange thing there but we rounded out with um jora mormont showing up so i don't know if he was in the beginning of the film and i don't remember him in the first film i guess he was in a few of the films based on some information i was reading but um it felt i heard his voice first before i realized it was him and i was like why does that sound familiar and so I saw him, like, that looks a lot like Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones, and sure enough, it was. So I got to thinking that, as a silly side thing, that does the Khaleesi know that he's doing such evil things? And it kind of presented an interesting backstory that if they ever do, um, do a background video on Jorah Mormont as far as why he or how he got exiled by Ned Stark then he could definitely portray that very well so just a side bit of um, fun trivia that Jorah Mormont is in this film. So overall if I was to grade this film I'd probably give it about uh, just like the last review a solid 85% it was a good film overall well done. Um, I since having not played any of the games, I think that's kind of why I'm holding it better than the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's like in the tens of percents by the um, critics and like about 60% by the audience. But for me, I mean, yes, it's a, a tro tropey zombie film based on a video game, but not having played the video game, for me, it kind of works just because it, they're understanding that it's a video, a film based on a video game. So this film felt like it was trying to definitely pay homage to the video game it was built off of by having those sound effects zombies um the main character wielding a um, double weapons and the various shots and sounds and things like that so is it a good great uh film the height of cinema and all of that no, definitely not but it was an enjoyable film i got through it i didn't 
think that it was it, it basically it was a film that I didn't find that I was getting bored while watching it. Um, in certain things, you were kind of, you would have kind of expect to happen, like with the scientists um, being found out by the bad guys that, or by Umbrella Corp that he's double crossing them and things like that. So nothing really unexpected, but it was an enjoyable film as far as zombies go and video game to film adaptations. So I guess there's four more films that are out already after this, with one coming later this year. So. If they do show up on streaming, I'll probably watch the rest of them to see how they hold up um, and to see if they're just as entertaining as this one. But as far as the first two films go, I, re I recommend watching them. I enjoy them. Um, not Definitely not a grade A film, but generally well done and good enough to... Um, I can see why they continued making or are continuing to make sequels in this franchise because so far they're doing a good enough job to warrant it. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to reach out to me, um, or anything like that, provide your own feedback, tell me what I got wrong or what you didn't like, things like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesdeal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next